This video looks at graphs and determines whether they're functions or not. To determine whether a graph is a function, we're going to be using the vertical line test. If a vertical line can be drawn anywhere on the graph so that it intersects a graph more than once, then the graph is not a function. So if you take a look at this picture to the right, we have drawn a vertical line right here. It intersects the graph at two places, so this would not be a function. That's how the vertical line test works. We will want to write the domain and range of the graphs we're considering, and we'll be writing those in interval notation. The interval notation is found by simply looking at the graph and seeing your starting and stopping point for your x and y values. For each graph, let's determine whether it represents a function. We'll justify it by stating that it either passes or fails the vertical line test, and then we'll state the domain and range in interval notation. Let's take it our Look at our first graph here. Is there anywhere that we can draw a vertical line and it intersect our graph more than once? No, there's not. So since no vertical line intersects our graph more than once, this is a function. Next, we want to state the domain and range in interval notation. So, starting with domain, those are all of our x values. I always start on the left side of my graph because that's where my smaller x values are. I look to see if I have an arrow pointing to the left. And indeed, I do. I mean, this arrow is kind of pointing up, but as it's pointing it's up, it's also moving to the left. So that arrow pointing to the left tells me that my domain starts at negative infinity. I continue along my graph to see if there are any breaks or holes in it. There isn't. It keeps going, and in fact, now I have an arrow pointing up, but also to the right which indicates that my x values are going to get increasingly large, the end part of our domain is going to be positive infinity. Next is range, and this is all of our y values. Just like with domain, I look for an arrow pointing in the negative y direction. So I look and see, do I have an arrow pointing down. I do not, so that tells me that my, dom my range is not going to start at negative infinity, but a specific number. Coming in from the bottom, we look to see where we first start having graph, and that's right here. This spot sitting at negative 2. So the beginning of our range is negative 2. Since there's actually graph there, I know I drew in that red uh, dot, but you know, since there's actually graph there and not an open circle, that indicates that we are including that number. So we're starting by including negative 2. Now we proceed up our graph. Is there anywhere as we go up that our graph has a hole or a gap in it? There is not. And then when I get to the top of the graph, I see arrows pointing up. That tells me to go forever up all the way to positive infinity. This function has a domain of negative infinity to positive infinity and a range of negative 2 included to positive infinity. Let's take a look at our next graph. We're going to start by determining whether it's a function. We do this by using the vertical line test. If there's anywhere we can draw a vertical line and it hits the graph more than once, then it's not a function. 
Oh, I can see right here, if I draw a vertical line, that vertical line is hitting the graph more than once. This is not a function. Our justification here would be that it fails the vertical line test. Ah, I didn't write that justification on the previous example. This is a function because it passed the vertical line test. So this is not a function, but we still want to state the domain and range in interval notation. Domain is our x values. I start by looking to see if I have an arrow pointing to the left, which would be small x values. I do not. That means that our domain is going to start at a specific number, and we just need to approach from the left to see where we start having graph. And the first place from the left that we have graph is right here at negative 2. That is the beginning of our domain. We include negative 2 because we have graph right there. There's not an open circle, and we know that all around this graph, everywhere that's connected, is full of points. So we're starting at negative 2 included. Then we proceed from left to right to see if there are any gaps or breaks in our graph. There are not. But also note that we don't have an arrow pointing to the right. That means that our domain will not end with positive infinity, but at a specific number. So as we move from left to right, where does our graph stop? Well, right here at positive 6. Our domain ranges between negative 2 and positive 6. Now it's time for the range, which is our y value. In this graph, I do not have an arrow pointing down, so I'm going to come in from the bottom and see where I start having graph. That happens right here at negative 6. So the beginning of my range is negative 6. As we proceed up our graph, we look for any breaks or holes in the graph. We don't have any. We also don't have an arrow pointing up. That means that our range is going to stop at a specific number. So as we go from bottom to top, we see that our graph ends right here at 8. This relation, which is not a function because it failed the vertical line test, has a domain of negative 2 to 6, included on both ends, and a range of negative 6 to 8, included on both ends. All right, we got one more example. We're de first determining whether it's a function. Now, although I can draw a vertical line right here, and it only hit my graph one time, vertical line test says, is there anywhere that you can draw it where it hits more than once? And if I drew that vertical line over here, yes, it hits more than once. In fact, it hits three times. So this graph is not a function. It fails the vertical line test. Even though it's not a function, we can state the domain and range in interval notation. Starting with domain, that's our x values. I always start to look to see if I have an arrow pointing to the left. That would imply that my domain starts at negative infinity. And indeed we do. That arrow that's pointing up is also pointing to the left. Our domain is starting at negative infinity. We move along our graph from left to right and see if there's any holes or gaps in our graph. There are not and we have an arrow pointing to the right, this tells us that our domain stops at positive infinity. Moving on to range, 
Those are our y values. We start by looking to see if we have an arrow pointing down. We do. This arrow here that's pointing to the right is also pointing down as it moves to the right. This tells us that our range starts at negative infinity. We proceed up our graph, so from, from bottom straight up, looking for any holes or gaps in our graph. We don't have any. And I notice that we have an arrow pointing up, indicating that our graph continues in that positive y value, y direction, all the way to positive infinity. This relation, which was not a function, has a domain of negative infinity to positive infinity and a range of negative infinity to positive infinity.